Former NHL or former Edmonton Oiler Tyler Ennis joins us for his weekly appearance on the show. We've gotten rid of the brick wall. I like that. We're going with a more <laughs> casual vibe. This is good. Yeah, the brick wall is just over here. So I've stayed in the same room, but uh, switched spots. Do you think starting the season at home is bad for teams? Is it maybe good to go out on the road and just have the boys away from everything? Can start on the road be a positive? Maybe this opening four-game homestand for the Oil just isn't what they needed. Yeah, I mean, it's always tough. The first the first few games of the season are always tough, regardless of if you're at home or on the road. Um, it's always a little bit like college hockey, I think. It's a lot of effort a lot of skating fast pace but not as controlled so um i think it, it was a tough game last night but again no reason to panic in any sense of the imagination it's it's the first game of the season and um yeah it was those those games are always tough yeah how difficult can it be to kind of get into the pace of regular season hockey after a, an eight game preseason I just think it's such a weird change of like tempo and everything. Like the preseason, you have older guys just kind of, you know, getting their hips and groins and everything back into it. Timing isn't really a thing. You're just kind of, you know, it's tiring. It's different than camp. Uh, playing a game is is exhausting. So there's so many different things that go into it. Um, and then you have, you know, young guys or kind of AHL guys really trying to make a name for themselves, maybe fighting, maybe just skating that much harder. Um, so just the pace and everything's different. And then once you get to the regular season, it means so much more that everyone ramps up their pace, even the, the star players, everybody. But that timing and everything just isn't there yet. Um, and it takes a while, like. That's why I said it's a little bit like college hockey where everyone's just going so fast and working so hard. And until you get into the rhythm of the season, you start to, you, you just are, are just expending so much energy and hitting more than you probably would usually. And then once the rhythm sets in, that's when, you know, the game kind of becomes more easy to analyze, especially for, for teams. Yeah. Like, do you think there also is maybe something to, the Oilers are a skilled team. They need those puck touches. They need to have their feel. Their timing's got to be good. Winnipeg is a team that thrives on crashing and banging and playing like a super high energy in your face kind of game. And we were just talking about how Calgary, who is not supposed to be any good this year, yeah. goes and beats up on a team or beats a team in Vancouver who, similar to Edmonton, skill, puck touches, all that stuff. Is it tougher being a skill guy to maybe get that feel early versus a team that is just trying to jam it down your throat all night? I think for sure, like even last night, just watching the game, kind of the third and fourth lines, especially the third line with Brown and Henrik and Janmark, they played really well. Like they were working hard and, and just playing simple and, and playing with energy. And it, it is easier to perform well when your focus is strictly just to work hard. When there's so much chemistry involved on you know, especially the top six and timing and creativity and rhythm. And the first few games this season are just, they're just different. It's just easier to assess things later on in the season when everyone's settled into everything, the pace and systems and, and everything. I want to pick your brain a little bit about going up against an elite goalie and Connor Hellebuck reigning Vesna guy is obviously that, but a couple of moments in that game last night, we talked about the McDavid play where he basically had worked himself into a spot to have a clear lane at Hellebuck. It wasn't quite a full breakaway, but instead of shooting it, he tries to seam it to Hyman backdoor who kind of had his stick taken away from him on the power play. I didn't think they had, they weren't operating with the same sense of, urgency that we've seen them operate with in the past is there something about when there's a guy like Hellebuck on the other side that can get into your head a little bit where you start thinking like man I need a perfect shot to beat this guy and I'm not just gonna take the easy look I'm gonna try see if we can set up the more clean look back door or something I mean for me yes it did get in my head but that's just speaking for myself I was never a elite superstar I don't think for those guys it it is you know the same um like for connor and leon and those guys i 
I think the play that you're talking about is more a reflection of just the timing and 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 just feeling the season. You know, it was game one. You know, if it's later on in the season, Connor's got his mojo. He might do something different, or Himes might, you know, attack at a different angle or whatever. Your timing is just different. Um, I don't think that those super super high end guys are too concerned about who's in that really. But for me, I was, you know, like I, sometimes I'd be like, Oh, I better have like a grade a to just like, that's the only reason I'm going to, the only way I'm going to score is if I have a grade a chance. Otherwise, like there's no point in me even shooting because this guy's just going to save it. But for the, the high end guys, I don't think it really matters. How heavy into pre-scouting goalies were you in your career? Like, were you breaking down filming? Like, hey, if I get a look, I should go blocker side on this guy? Or did you never really get that deep with it? I didn't get deep with it. I probably should have more. I think the more, the most I focused on it would have been like shootouts, you know, uh, just tendencies on on what guys did on penalty shots or shootouts or whatever. That's as far as I got into it. But, you know, there was that information out there every day in the, the room game days the coaches do a great job the goalie coaches of breaking down you know the weaknesses of the goalie on the other side and i just didn't look at it you know so i probably should have uh but it just i just didn't fair uh you got another one uh yeah there's uh donnell nurse is someone who's always part of the conversation at edmonton to say the least when he's at his best what do you think he's doing well i think I think the fans and a lot of people get on Nursey just because obviously of his contract situation, but what Nursey does really well is he defends really well. He's big and strong. He's tough to get by. He's in great shape. I mean, he, a lot of his goals come late in the games because he's getting up and down the ice better than a lot of guys because he's in great shape. And I think, One thing that he brings that a lot of guys don't bring that are making the money that he makes is he's really tough too. Like Nursey is a presence out there. Um, He, he is, he plays mean and he, he he's not afraid to fight. And when he does fight, he's tough. So I think Nursey, the ideal role for him is to be a sound all around good defenseman, Um, not worry about points because you already have Bush running the PP. So Nursey's numbers aren't going to reflect his salary regardless. And you can't hold that against him because he's not playing PP one. Everyone wants Bush to run PP one. He's doing a great job. So I think Nursey's expectation should be play super hard, be difficult to def- uh, be difficult to play against, defend well, and be mean and be tough and just all around good P care. You're reliable, strong, great defenseman. I think that's a great point too. Like his numbers are never going to catch up to the salary. And that's obviously going to be a lightning rod and an easy thing for fans to reach at. And I also do think as much as people in our chat were groaning about this earlier, I think the partner you put with Darnell Nurse matters. If, if you look at the numbers, he's always seemed to succeed a bit more when he's got a puck mover on, on, on his side. And to your point, maybe that allows him to, or makes him think he can play a more simple game when it's like, okay, I don't have to be the guy making the stretch pass. I don't need to force my jumps up into the rush. Like, his game is best when it's simple, and maybe they need to get someone on his side. I'm thinking Troy Stetcher right now, but I know it's very early in the year. But like someone who can make that good first pass, they can maybe take some pressure off him. Well, I like Stetcher a lot, and Stetcher plays hard. He's not a big guy, but he plays physical. So if they are paired together, I like that pairing too because that's a pairing that's tough to play against. And I think, I mean, if you're – in the situation where Nurse is and he's making a lot of money, I think individually it's just human nature to want to perform up to that standard. And the only way to reflect that in people's eyes is to have numbers like that. But he's not going to have those numbers because he's not playing the PP. So now that it's it's obvious that Bush is going to be the guy getting numbers, I think that maybe is easier for Nurse to just control the defense play defense play solid play really strong minutes maybe a a bit like Ekholm does um reliable and maybe he gets even more offense because 
he's asked to do less. You never know. Uh, last area I wanted to go to with you. Last week, we played you the one goal to get a little story time with you. But watching the game last night, two guys, like, I mean, Dry Settle always stands out in this way. He is never afraid to give a guy a whack in the nicest way possible. He is not afraid to play like a bit of a prick. And Mark Shifley, I think, is like that as well. Shifley was running around getting under guys' skin last night. Was there a guy you went up against in your career who, again, was maybe at that star level who you were just like, man, this guy is just an asshole to go up against? I think like almost all of the superstars have that quality. Like even Kucherov's a small guy, but he's he's gonna give you a shot anytime you're around. Like Patty Kane was the same way too. He played so hard. People think he's just a small skill guy, but he was so competitive. Um, you need that fire, and I I love that fire. I mean, Connor was hitting last night too. Um, I think it's it's always nice to see that. But yeah. Almost all of those guys. Nathan McKinnon plays with such an edge, too. Um, it's tough to think of a superstar that isn't like that, to be honest. I have one because some Andrew put it in our chat before, and he said he remembers watching you play when you played for the Tigers in a six. You scored six goals in a game, and I just looked it up. You guys won that game 6-2. So you scored oh, all six goals in that game. Is that right? That is true. Yeah, that's uh, that's probably my favorite moment. Um, you know, definitely it, that I experienced individually. So that was a fun night, definitely. And um, I'm in the process of, you know, putting some of my jerseys up and stuff. So that six goal puck will end up mounted somewhere in this house at some point. I think that's sweet. You still have it. And you were held off the score sheet in the first period. You scored a hat trick in the second and a hat trick <laughs> in the third. That's fucking insane. And I have to add too that uh, my coach, Willie Desjardins, at the time didn't play me for the last, like, I don't know, chunk of the third period. He had no idea the record was seven. I didn't either, but it was because it was before playoffs. So I always give Willie a hard time about that because. Uh, <laughs> I could have potentially got the record, but he sat me on the bench. So we uh, we laugh about that sometimes. But yeah, that was a fun night, and that was a a long, long time ago. Yeah. Uh, all right. As always, appreciate your time, man. Thanks for popping on, and uh, we'll chat with you next week at some point. Oilers will be like four games into their schedule uh, by then, but we'll chat next week. Great. Thanks for having me on, guys. Appreciate it. What's up, Nation citizens? If you like that video, then you need to be subscribed to the Oilers Nation YouTube. Podcasts, live shows, exclusive interviews and analysis, everything you need from your favorite voices at Oilers Nation. And you don't want to miss any of it, so hammer that subscribe button.